still come to us. They have to vote in the primaries. They don't vote in the primaries. I'm not saying, no, 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 Jim, I am not suggesting leave your party. I'm not suggesting that. I'm not suggesting don't go out and vote. I'm not saying be a Democrat or be a Republican. You change yourself, and out of that group will come people. We need good people with values, not politicians. We need good people with values. you got a block here of two, three million people. Somebody's coming out of there. And it might be a Democrat, it might be a Republican. They might be all Republicans, all Democrats, it doesn't matter. Are they good people? Then we're together. We have to change who we are. Does that make sense, Dave? I think that what we've done is we've abdicated our responsibility as neighbors to the federal government, to even state agencies, and uh, we've outsourced everything to Washington. Yeah. It's time to take it home yeah. and just take care of each other again. I mean I, I mean, I know this sounds bad, and here's a clip that'll be run forever on, you know, uh, calling me violent, but when did get off my land lose its meaning? When did get off my land, when did we stop saying that? Get off my land. It's my land. I don't want you here. I don't want you here. This is my land. And the neighbor is coming next and saying, yeah, damn right. I don't necessarily agree with him on a lot of stuff, but that's his land and this is my land. That's what we need to get back. Not in a violent way, just in a, what the hell are you even doing here? Who are you? Exactly right. The Constitution. The Constitution. Glenn, yes, we sir. need to uh, remember that we're the ones that hired these people to work for us in Washington. So we've got to fundamentally change how we go about hiring these people. And one of the things we have to do is realize that the first thing we do is we're teaching them to be crack addicts before they ever get elected. Because they have no limits on what they can spend in order to get the job. So the first thing I think we need to do is put limits of maybe a dollar per voter that they can spend on their election, no. you know what, you and know, it balances the Here's field. a limit. Term limits. Yeah, you got that right. Yeah. Term limits. Absolutely. It's good enough for the president. It's not good enough for them. Term limits Absolutely. is the limit that we, we need to find. Absolutely, but we've got, to get, we've got to get the people. We've got a lot of brilliant people out there. They have great ideas that don't have enough of the right friends. And we have to make the playing field to where they can get their voice heard, and maybe we can hire better employees through that process. I will tell you this. Um, I have been kind of the fish out of water m my whole career. I've been the guy who was on the air on talk radio that was funny, and everybody was like, well, you know, you got to... And I talked about different things in spirituality. No, you got to talk about politics. And I just, I did my thing. I've been the fish out of water over at CNN. I mean, you want to talk about a fish? I mean, I was, on the, I was in the middle of the, of the desert over there. <laughs> Here I'm a fish out of water too, because I don't really talk. I don't. I don't care about the parties, and people don't understand that in America. They just don't understand that. It's good to be a fish out of water. You don't have to necessarily have friends. Don't do do yourself a favor. Don't make as many enemies of, as I have made myself. But you don't necessarily have to have a lot of friends. And uh, let me rephrase that. Don't ever lose your soul for a favor. When you go down, I was doing an interview today with somebody and they said, what Aaron is saying, wrap it up. I'll be back with the rest of that story. It's a good one. Hang on just a second. All right, we're uh, back in Orlando, Florida, where I'm doing the uh, American Revival. I'm standing here and I'm thinking, that, you know, it's like that movie where we're talking about the president and, you know, and then he's just screwing everything. He's behind me, isn't he? <laughs> um, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, what I was saying when I went into the break is um, I was talking to somebody today, and this is a big business person, and they said, uh, so what's the secret? What's the secret? Because you were bottomed out, you know, 15 years ago, and you had nothing 10 years ago, and now. And I said, the secret is not caring. Losing absolutely everything, and then saying, I'm alive? and I have my soul. And I'll even lose my life, but I won't lose my soul. That's where we have to be, and, and we have to, the secret is getting there before we bottom out. Because somebody has to be strong to hold everybody else up. And Josh, we were talking during the break, and you said that you're changing your whole life. How do you mean? Well, I, I've got a pretty stable job and a good family. You know, we're not 
you know, in trouble in, in the grand scheme of things. But just over the year, last year or two, I, I've just realized that, that something I've been drawn to, to finding out more, learning about the truth of, of the country and just the way things are supposed to work the way they used to work. And I'm back in school now taking political science classes. I'm not looking for an actual career change. If, if I never get a new job, it will be fine with me. But just having that, you know, that knowledge so that I, I can sit here and say, I know what's going on. I might not be able to, myself to do something about it, but I think that that is the secret. If, if I do that and, and Chris does that and everyone in here does that and people across the country